Hey folks, welcome back to Heart Gold vs. Crystal. We are here in Goldenrod City, and we are heading up north because there are plenty of trainer battles to be done. Um, there is a gym in this city, but it is generally regarded as one of the toughest gym leaders uh, in the entire series. Definitely in the game, probably in the series. Um, so going up here and getting a few levels for your team can actually be of very great use if, if you find yourself in trouble. Now, unfortunately, it's a route with a bunch of trainers, and there's very rarely much to say about a route with a bunch of trainers, but if it was just footage of me running up to a bunch of trainers and not showing any of the fights, that would be really boring. Um, so, for one, let's have a demonstration of Solar Beam. Um, like I said in, in the previous episode, I'm not the biggest fan of two-turn moves. Uh, two-turn moves is in one where you charge up the first turn and release it the second, or you release it the first turn and need to recharge the second, kind of like Hyper Beam. Because um, I like to be active all the time. But when you do the math, it tends to work out fairly well. Um, I don't remember Solar Beam's base power off the top of my head, but it is strong enough to do basically what two typical normal moves would do in, 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 in basically about the same amount of time. You could make a quibbling argument about PP and how I, I would rather have a higher PP move that has the same basic damage output, but mm, whatever. It, it, it tends to do a pretty good job, like Solar Beam. One shot of the sand shoe got the Meryl down quite a bit. Anyway, watch out for Rollout there. Rollout functions very similarly to Fury Cutter. And I will be most likely complaining about Fu uh, Rollout in the near future. Not in this episode, but in a future episode. If things go as they seem to always go. Um... But yeah, that, that was a demonstration of basically what uh, Frida is going to have to do for most, well not most, but for a long time after this. Because um, unfortunately, Frida doesn't have a great move pool, um, especially by leveling up. So basically Solar Beam and one other upcoming move will be the, the main attack moves for Frida. Up until, like, level 27, um, at least in Heart Gold. In, in Crystal, it'll come a bit sooner, and there'll be a, a major, significant, notable difference between the two versions. But, yeah, Frida's gonna have some trouble for some time. Anyway, here's Arnie. Arnie, Arnie, Arnie. Hi there, Arnie. I'm showing him because he has a Venonat, and Venonat are pretty, pretty rad. Um, I say this basically... A Venonat is another one of those Pokemon that I want to use, but just haven't for whatever reason. I mean, it's been available since the first generation. You'd think I'd have used it in these, good lord, 14 years. Um, but I haven't. So, if I ever do a, a similar comparable series to this uh, for the Kanto games, the red and fire red dudes, I want to use a Venonat, and I am putting this out on video to the public so that people know this and store it in their amazing memory banks and then pull it out when I, if and when I ever finally decide to do that. And, uh, and then I'll, I'll feel dumb for having forgotten it, and I'll probably have a mental breakdown and not end up using Venonat in, in the end anyway, but whatever. Putting it out there. Anyway, there's a metronome. I was hoping for some cool metronome thing, but unfortunately, no cool metronome things this time. I think we have one, actually, later in the episode, um, but not here. But notice that it's just generally not as, as beneficial to use metronome in fourth generation, possibly just because I happen to be unlucky in the fourth generation metronomes, but I don't know, maybe there's a weird skew towards good moves in, in, in Crystal. I mean, maybe just because there are fewer moves in Crystal, more of them are good? I don't know. But anyway, uh, that was Arnie. 
And uh, because I want to see a Venomoth in the future, I will be getting his phone number. I'm picking up a few phone numbers in this episode just because um, some of the trainers have evolved forms that I do want to show because they're cool. They're just like pretty rad overall. Um, but we won't see those for quite a while. Anyway, this route actually got a bit of a minor redesign uh, from the original games. It's not big enough to really care. The, the overall flow of the route is basically the same. But there's a little more weaving back and forth. Anyway, here's a TM. Uh, in Hard Gold and Soul Silver is Payback, which will have its own uses in the future. But here in Crystal, it is TM-04 Rollout. Uh, now, let's explain Rollout, even though I briefly did before. It basically functions like Fury Cutter, in that it gets more powerful each subsequent turn you use it. Except, unlike Fury Cutter, you are locked into using it. Um, it's kind of like how Rage was in the first generation, uh, which locked you into using it and increased in power whenever you took damage. But here, you it's just every turn, and up to five, of course. And uh, that will be on Sandra. And it is worth noting that Defense Curl actually puts Rollout's power up the stage to begin with. Um, so you'll get a defense boost and then start the rollout at stage 2. So that's useful. Just if, if only for the, the defense boost. And hopefully that will be useful for taking out uh, maybe some flying Pokemon, since I don't have Rock Tomb on, on Klaus. Anyway, here's the National Park. National Park, god, it's one of my favorite areas. Um, not because of like any sort of its like design or anything. But it has amazing, wonderful music, and it has a very nice aesthetic, and that intro splash image, very good looking. And it has uh, one of the most fun events in the game for me, uh, which we will demonstrate at some point just for the fun of it, but nothing important now. Anyway, this lady gives you a quick claw, which has a percent chance, I don't know what percent, probably like 10 or something, uh, to allow your Pokemon to strike first regardless of speed. So give it to a slow Pokemon, and once in a while you'll have some good luck. I'm putting that on, on Bree, um, again for future nefarious purposes. Anyway, here's a Snubble. I showed off a Snubble, oh god, two episodes ago, one episode ago, when we were coming out of Ilex Forest. Um, but this one belongs to a person who has a phone number that we can get. And I want to show Snobble's evolved form, so we will uh, we will be doing this. We we will fight this this Snubble. Anyway, see how the Solar Beam does on something that isn't weak to it? Pretty darn well, although it is a Snubble, so I assume it's like doesn't have good special defense or something. I don't know. I've never used a Snubble. And that was simple enough. Anyway, that takes care of the first part of the episode, and I will see you guys in a sec after this commercial break. Alrighty, Snubble Lady is taken care of, and we will get her phone number for future endeavors, future fights. It'll be fun. And speaking of the phone, it's Mother again. Someone mentioned apparently um, Mom will stop buying items for you if you have five stocked up. Um, on the one hand, yeah, sure. On the other hand, I want berries, man. Give me the berries. Give me the money, dog. I, I will never turn down stuff. I, I always want stuff, so I, I will endure phone calls if I get stuff, even if it's stuff I never use, because I want stuff. Anyway, this girl actually, um, nothing interesting about her other than having a Cubone, but we did have one little fun metronome in, uh, excursion here. Unfortunately, all the really stylish moves have kind of been used up already. Um, so let's show off Substitute. Uh, Substitute will take a quarter of your HP, um, and create a Substitute. So, 
it, it has the same amount of HP that you gave it, basically. And it uh, acts as a wall to keep you from losing any more HP. But the fun thing is, um, if, y if an attack against it does more damage than it can take, um, the extra damage does not go over to you. So, in a way, it's a way of reducing damage in really tight situations, um, or, or preventing you from getting poisoned or other things like that, and just kind of keeping a nice wall between you and your opponent. Anyway, I'm taking this advantage to use uh, Charm to attack his, uh, to lower his attack, rather. Um, so first off, that'll make it so it's harder for him to break my substitute. Um, and then second off, it will just, you know, be, be annoying for him. He will do less damage overall. Now the one, like, byproduct downside to substitute is the stupid animation of going in and out of the substitute in order to use moves and do damage. Takes uh, a little while. So I apologize for that. Anyway, neat little thing, you see that uh, little image that's used as a substitute, that's a... It's meant to look like a Rhydon, um, it's basically the the image, backside of the image that was used as the menu image for a lot of species of Pokémon in the first two generations. And it's meant to look like a Rhydon, if you if you use substitute in the Pokémon Stadium games, it's a Rhydon. Why a Rhydon? Um, well, I have conspiracy theories regarding that, but I don't know, because it looks cool. Anyway, she will also give you phone number, but no thank you. Who do you think I am, getting phone numbers of, of young and playful children? Anyway, this girl mentioned, this lady mentions the Pokewalker. Uh, that's an accessory that was released along with Heart Gold and Soul Silver that essentially acted as a pedometer. Every step you took um, was a step of experience, kind of like the the uh, daycare. And it was supposed to encourage kids to exercise. Uh, instead, it encouraged kids to find a way to bypass the system and just kind of rotate the, the Poke Walker in a smooth and methodical fashion. That, that, that will prepare them for adolescence, basically. Anyway, there are a few items stashed around here the, in the, uh, behind the fence. Got the Soothe Bell, uh, which I was mixing up, unfortunately, with the Shell Bell um, at the time of the recording. I should... Oh, by the way, look at this uh, rock climb wall. Um, in a very suspicious place. If you played Shiny Gold, you'll remember there were also wonderful prizes there. Um, but anyway, mixing up the Soothe Bell and the Shell Bell. Shell Bell will restore uh, your hit points when you do damage to an opponent. Um, Soothe Bell will make a Pokémon more friendly, so I should have given it to Bree. And I will soon. Anyway, here's a TM for Dig. Um, Dig is a... it's a two-turn move, and it's not even as good as, uh, as um, Solar Beam. But on the other hand, it is the only option for Sandra uh, as a ground type move until I think Sand Tomb, and I don't even know when that is. And considering that's a stab move, we kind of want a stab move. It's important. Um, in Crystal, it's also Dig, and I taught that actually to uh, Webster rather than Sandra because Webster doesn't have Nightshade, Nightshade in Crystal, and that's. A useful thing to have. It's, it's like an actually somewhat good damaging move compared to Poison Sting. Anyway, now that we've gotten all the items out of the way, um, we can go head off to the east, uh, which will give us a whole two more trainers to fight. Not a whole lot of experience, but every little bit helps, so it, it's, it's worth it. So let's just get out from behind these fences and head over east. Uh, now you can also get to the route on the east by uh, cutting through the tree right next to the bug catcher with a venonat. Um, but I didn't feel like it, alright? And there are plenty of trainers in, in the national park worth fighting, so... I... You can do whatever you want. It's, it's your decision. I'm pro-choice. Anyway, um, 
two trainers on here. They're actually somewhat notable. Um, one was a really boring fight, so I won't show most of it. Uh, the other was a fairly boring fight, so I won't show any of it. Um, but hey, let's look at this. He has an Abra. Abra is uh, it's a pre-evolution of Kadabra, which is the pre-evolution of Alakazam. Um, and it's one of the biggest juggernauts of, of Crystal. If you can catch one and, and raise it up to be a Kadabra, you are pretty much set. Uh, that and a Graveler will, will do you good things. But it's here, it's also a good opportunity for Webster to get some experience. Because uh, this Abra can't do anything except use Flash, which lowers accuracy. And while that's annoying, uh, that also means that Webster won't take any damage. So I can just use Nightshade um, and, and take care of it. And Webster isn't getting a whole lot of action recently. So this is a, a good thing to have. And you can just rinse and repeat that for the next era. He also has a Kadabra, but that was a huge train wreck and, and wasn't a great fight, so I won't be showing that. Uh, but I will be showing that Frida raised to level 17 and got the move Bullet Seed. Um, now, Bullet Seed, I could have learned it earlier if I hadn't sold the TM, but it, at the time I wasn't thinking that I was going to use an Execute. Um, it's, it's a Grass-type Fury attack. It's basically an alternative to Uproar, because I would much rather have a weak stabbed move than a weak unstabbed move that doesn't work against Voltorb. Anyway, here's a phone call. It's Beverly again, the one with the snubble. This is, it's time for some continuing escapades with, with her obsession with Merrill's. I, I do hope that the story continues. I, I, I hope that she gets one one day. Anyway, the last trainer we're dealing with here is a schoolboy. I'm not showing it. He has a Tangela. Um, it, it's it's fairly bulky. It can take hits well. Use fire type or, or flying type or fixed damage moves like Nightshade, and it will work. It'll go down. Now the reason we can't progress any further is because of this strange, mysterious tree in the way. If your wood is wiggling, there there are problems. Uh, you would also see that wiggling wood if you went uh, west from Violet City, which is unnecessary uh, unless you're going to the ruins of Elf. But even then, there are alternative methods of getting there. Um, basically, it's a roadblock um, that is at the center of the region at a, a three-pronged fork between the various important things in the region. Anyway, one last thing I want to do before I wrap up the episode is uh, head back into Ilex Forest and teach Headbutt to one more Pokemon. Um, I asked for confirmation, and it was successful. You can, in fact, teach Headbutt as many times as you want from this guy. Unfortunately, only one more Pokemon that I have can learn it, and that's Sandra. Um, so we got two Headbutts on there, and uh, two Butts are always better than one. Uh, it's a much better alternative to Scratch, that's definitely sure. It's higher base power, and it has the possibility of flinching. So, uh, it's a win-win situation, no reason not to. Headbutt is actually just a really, really good move at this point in the game, and I would highly recommend it to anyone who enjoys butting heads. Anyway, now it's just a matter of getting back to the Pokémon Center, and preparing to fight the Gym Leader and also the rest of the gym, but mostly the gym leader. Um, because, ooh boy, this gym leader. I, I haven't fought them yet, I'm expecting it to be pretty darn difficult, especially given my levels right now. Um, but we'll see that in a little bit. So, I will see you guys next time for the Golden Round City Gym.